Welcome to another video from Ellensburg Amplifier Repair and Service. Today I have a uh, California A600XL amplifier here for you. And what we're going to do today is we're going to go over the power supply of this board. Um, it, uh, it originally had two shorted power supply transistors over here, the, the 50 N06 power supply transistors. And um, the originals are the STP50 N06s, and I have installed the uh, SFP50 N06 on this bank over here. So these four are in parallel, and these four are in parallel uh, on the same drive. And... Um, when I replaced these transistors, I realized that this bank here uh, was heating up, not hot, but they were definitely uh, getting warm to the touch versus this side. This side was stone cold, this side was heating up. And my demonstration for today is to kind of, kind of uh, go over the difference between using an oscilloscope, which you can see in the upper left hand corner, versus a meter. Um, you can get the same results, but visualization sometimes will, will be the key to understanding what's going on with the circuit. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to um, go ahead and take my channel 2, my oscilloscope here, and I'm going to hook it up to the gate of one bank and then I am going to probe the bank of the probe the gate of the other bank and we're gonna fire up this power supply real quick here and what you're gonna see let me uh, just grab a single shot of this here so as you can see on the scope there the the yellow side so this side is the blue side, this side is the yellow side. And when I'm comparing it to the uh, picture there of the oscilloscope, the yellow side is the side that was heating up and the blue side was the side that was staying cold. But if you look at the picture there on the yellow trace, you can see how you have two shoulders on the left and right hand side of the top of the of the uh, of the sine wave there and you have a you have a quick dive on the um, on state of the gate so if you compare that to the blue signal the side that was staying cold you can see it's got a nice clean up a somewhat of a curve down i mean that's still an adequate drive signal there's no shoulders there's no spikes but that yellow trace there, that yellow signal is of concern because it's not getting fully turned on and it's not fully turning off if you look and see where the blue line and the yellow line crosses. So what's happening is that transistor is still on just briefly, momentarily, while that blue transistor is turning on. And that's what's causing the heat on this transistor and it's running at about 42.9 kilohertz. Now, let's do the same thing, but using a meter. So I'm gonna turn my meter on here. So this is for people that are uh, repairing amplifiers without a scope. And this is where it's gonna get a little bit more harder to understand what's going on if you have heating transistors. Some people will think you have the bad uh, drain to source, uh, you have a bad gate to source, you have a bad junction somewhere, so some people will think that the transistors are bad. But if you come over here to my trusty resistance tests, you'll see I should have 100 and 190 ohms between the gate and the source. 
which I do, 190 ohms. So using a meter shows, well, there's no problem with the gate drain source of the transistors. But, so if you switch the meter to frequency, you're gonna see that I get the same frequency. So your negative meter on the ground and your positive meter probe on the gate. We turn this on, you're gonna see that we have the 42.9 kilohertz on the gate of one bank and the 42.9 kilohertz on the other bank. So meter wise, using just a, a digital multimeter, shows that there's no problem, no issue with the transistors. But you know there's a problem because they're heating up. And the only real way you're gonna know what the problem is, is by using an oscilloscope to visualize what that gate is doing. And you can see that gate just has those shoulders there, which those shoulders need to go away. So let's trace that back. Let's trace that back to why is it creating that shoulder? So if we go back, so here's your gate resistors next to the gates. And so what we're gonna do is we're just gonna move our way around to find where this is coming from. So over here, Q7 and Q8 are the buffer transistors for the uh, drive of the TL494. The drive for that TL494 is coming off of pins 9 and 10, which is pretty standard for uh, power supply circuits. So there you have a nice square wave on 9 and a nice square wave, square wave on 10. And you can, so you know that the 494 is functioning the way it should. So then what we're going to do is we're going to go over here to the, uh, the buffer transistors. And you're going to see there's our signal coming in. There's our signal going out. So this one is going to this bank here. So there's our signal coming in. And there's our signal going out. Oh, but what do you see there? So there you can see that you're getting that uh, when this when the drive is turning off, it's not turning off all the way. You got that shoulder while the transistor is turning off. Well, that's that that buffer transistor is telling that gate to not turn off fully halfway down. So what we're going to do is we're going to replace that transistor which is the C1027 Q7 and Q8 over here uh, that C1027 transistor, we're gonna go ahead and replace that because this is the side that originally had the fault and it looked like it had more than one fault because the trace, the traces were have been repaired on the drains. So when that side failed, when this side shorted out, it more than likely damaged Q7 over here. So what we'll do is we'll replace Q7. At the same time, I'm just gonna go ahead and replace both Q7s there. I mean, I'm at the same location, takes the same transistor. So I'm just gonna pull both and replace both just for durability. And we'll come back and see what that uh, signal looks like with the new drive transistor. So stay tuned, I'll be right back with you. We'll get that replaced. All right, welcome back to this California Profile Amplifier. So, as you can see, I had to uh, 
take a little break on the recording because I had to fire the fans back up because it was getting kind of hot in here and you guys would never be able to hear me with the fans running. Uh, so I got the Q8 and Q7 uh, transistors replaced for the gates. Everything's checked. Uh, everything works as intended. And as I was testing uh, the the gate drive, I must have missed at the very beginning. I did not have 12 volts on the uh, on the drains here. Yeah, so I, I I must have missed at the very beginning that I I didn't have 12 volts on the drain. I was seeing the drive on the gate, but I neglected to check the uh, the switching of the transistor. So I, as I was uh, testing the switching of the transistors, I realized I did not have a uh, drive on the transistor because I didn't have 12 volts. So. Well, come to find out, this board uh, suffers from just numerous uh, bad solder joints. And the 12 volt winding of the transformer here did not have a connection from the trace to the winding. So, of course, it wouldn't pass 12 volts to the uh, drain of the transistors. So I resoldered those. I got all the leads soldered in well on the transformer. Everything's tight and secure. And when I fired that back up, both banks of transistors were just heating up like crazy. And I just couldn't figure out what was going on. It looked like it had originally been installed with 50 NO6s on this bank here just by looking at the solder joints. Well, I don't believe that this originally came out with the 50 NO6. I just there's uh, I just can't see that because these are original solder joints on the gate resistors. They're 100 ohms. Uh, they're using the uh, they're using a single buffer drive. They're using a single buffer transistor. Uh, they got their pull down resistors. So I just couldn't see that being a 50 NO6. So I switched the power supply transistors to the old, good old trusty IRZ 44Ns. And lo and behold, when you fire this thing up, it stays just cold as can be. So I'll go ahead and fire up this power supply here. Green light comes on. Do we have switching? You'll see the drive in the upper left hand corner there of the screen. Uh, let me change the time base here so you can see this clearly. So there is the drain of the output transistors. A nice clean square wave going on the upside and on the downside. So, and we're producing 31 volts positive and we are producing uh, 31 volts negative. Let's see what our drive looks like on the rectifier. So the rectifier drives, I don't see any ringing. It's as clean as can be. So those IRC 44s, and again, they're as, just as cold as they were before applying power. So I think the 44s are an excellent match to the drive so I questioned the 50 NO6s being original this board had been worked on um, it came to me non-functional had a shorted power supply so uh, it was definitely worked on so maybe they changed them to 50 NO6s well they would not work they were getting way too hot and if you have power supply transistors heating up with no load well there's something wrong and at the beginning when I showed you, you had that, there was a step on the upside on this on position and a step on the down position. So you know that that is incorrect. But now it's just as clean as can be. So what I'm going to show you is I do have a 50 hertz signal coming in to the input 
I did uh, resolder a lot of the connections on the underside of this board just to let you know. So let's go ahead and check our signal here coming in. There it is. 53 volts peak to peak. And then we'll check the emitter. 53 volts peak to peak. Nice clean sine wave on that. There is no distortion on that. No glitches. And then we'll check our uh, output terminals here to make sure all the solder joints are intact. And they, and they are. 53 volts, nice clean sine wave. And 53 volts, nice clean sine wave. The one thing I don't like about this board, again, this is the California Profile uh, 600 watt board, is I have a 1.3 volt, a 1.2 volt RMS input signal, which on my Heath kit, uh, my IG1272, I am showing about that 1.2. 1.17 volts on the input signal. So what I don't like, let me change my voltage setting here, is the gain. So if you watch the gain real close, this gain is all the way counterclockwise. And if I just turn it just a little bit, it goes right into clipping. And we're talking an eighth of a turn and I'm already getting into that clipping signal. So I, and of course, with today's head units, you're what, you're gonna be four volts on the input? Well, if I turn my input signal voltage up, you're gonna see it goes just right, it's into clipping, I mean, that's going to be the easiest, sure way to destroy your amplifier is to run this thing into clipping at a zero gain. Basically, it's zero gain. It's just a just a short little, maybe a sixteenth of a turn on the potentiometer. Uh, so I may adjust the preamp section to help match this board to today's head units. So. I'm going to work on that, but otherwise, the primary problem of the board has been resolved. Power supply, stone cold. Transformer, cold. No components heating up. Even resistors, cold. And your output transistors, cold. So overall, the amplifier is great. I just need to do something with the input signal, or this board will come back uh, with a burnt output or a burnt power supply. So. I thank you for watching. Uh, if you like this kind of content, please like and subscribe. Uh, leave your comments down below there, and I will get back to you as soon as I can. And uh, we will catch you on the next one.